In this video, we're going to see different ways that we can query our database to get back what we're looking for. We'll be using the find method and passing in different parameters to retrieve the data. Next, we'll see how to sort the items we get back and how to limit the results. Let's continue using our example database that we created. So I'll say use example. I'm going to create a new collection in this database called student. So db.create collection. Passing in student. Now I'm going to add a bunch of documents to this collection using the insert method that we did in video number two. So here's my text file and this will be available to you. So I'm just going to copy over the student inserts. So I can copy these over and it'll say write result equals one, but I should still have these four documents in my collection. We'll say db.student.find and then dot pretty and we can see that we've added these four documents to our student collection. So at this point we'll take a look at different ways that we can query our collection to grab out certain things that we might be looking for. And in this collection of student we basically added a name, whether or not they're an undergrad, the number of units that they're taking, and an array of classes that our student is taking as well. So the first query example you've already seen, and that was find, db.student.find. Usually, when we're trying to get back all of the documents within a collection, we'll pass in an empty object. So in future examples, when we're actually building up apps, you'll see something very similar to this when we're trying to retrieve all the documents from our database with nothing else specified. Say we want to find one specific student. We can pass in a query that looks like this. And this could of course reference anything. It could reference the name, the undergrad, the units, or the classes. It will find all of those with the reference that we're looking for, in this case Rachel, and it will respond with those documents. And you can see that it pulled out the one document with the name of Rachel. We can also chain the dot pretty method in order to make this look more readable. One way to filter the documents that we're looking for is to use the dollar sign GT or dollar sign LT, and those stand for greater than or less than. So we could use something like this, in which case we're going to filter for units that are greater than six. So we should get back only two documents, the 12 and the nine. And we should not retrieve these two because they are less than six or equal to six. And we're looking for all those documents that are greater than six. So we can copy that over and you can see that we have two results and we can clean this up by chaining pretty and you can see again we have only those two results alternatively we can filter for less than so if we say less than we'll say seven units we should get back the two documents that have six units and three units And you can see we now we we're getting back the two documents that have units of less than seven. Kevin's units are three and Rachel's units are six. Another helpful query method is the in command. So in this example, we're looking at within the classes field 
and we want to pull out all those students that are enrolled in history. So using the in, we always have to specify an array. So we could say history and geography, for example, and this would be an array. But in this instance, we're just going to pull out all the students that are enrolled in a history class. Okay, and again, we find two students, Jane and Rachel, who are enrolled in history classes. So in can be a pretty useful command for filtering out your documents to find specifically what you're looking for. Now we'll take a look at how we can sort and limit the results of our queries. So when we're sorting, we typically assign either a one or a negative one to whatever it is that we're trying to sort. So in this instance, we're looking for students enrolled in history, and then we're sorting by ascending, and we're filtering by the number of units. So whichever student is enrolled in fewer units should appear at the top of the data that we get back. And when we submit this query, we get back first Rachel, who's enrolled in six units, and then Jane, who is enrolled in 12 units. So it was able to pull out those students, again, enrolled in history, and then sort based on the number of units that they're taking. And we can clean this up a little bit so you can see it better by using the dot pretty command. And again, Rachel is first and Jane is second. So as mentioned, we typically when sorting will either use one or negative one. So one would be ascending and negative one would be descending. So in this case, if I put negative one, then we should see Jane at the top. And we do. When we're using sort, it will either sort numerically or alphabetically. So in this case, we're sorting numerically. If instead we wanted to sort alphabetically, we would be sorting a string. And since we're using one as our method to sort, we'd be sorting in a descending manner. So those with the name closer to A will appear first, and those with the names closer to Z will appear towards the bottom. Okay, and that is what we get back. First Jane, then Joe, then Kevin, then Rachel. So I was able to look through all of the documents, extract those, and then sort them in a descending order. And finally, we always have the option to limit the number of results that we get back. And we can easily pass in just a number so that after retrieving all those documents according to whatever specificity that we've indicated, we can then say, now only give me the first two that you get back. So again, you can see how we've limited this to the first two results sorted by name. So we get back Jane first and then Joe. Now these are just the most common and useful commands that we tend to see used within MongoDB. There's more and you can find those in the query documents of MongoDB. So we've used in, we use less than. You can also use or conditions and and conditions. 